on this week's episode of She's Views, I'm going to get into so much more, but after the Powerhouse Series, we're now starting the Team Harden Series. Oh, you're not going to miss what James Harden's team had to say. And I kick it off with Xavier Giselle, big-time player for them, and AZ Compass Prep. You're not going to miss it. He's a special guest this week. As for me, I'm going to let you guys know all about the Anthony Davis trade and my take on that, and what the Pelicans did there. And for instance, I'm going to talk about so many guys in regards to Kawhi, the Knicks, Kyrie Irving, Kemba Walker, Tobias Harris, Jimmy Butler, and so much more. You're not going to miss that then. I'm going to give you guys a quick little draft recap before the big-time draft occurs this week. And of course, I'm going to close it off with Shoe Zone, fan favorite time, where I'm going to set up four topics. Well, I don't want to get too much into it, but you're not going to miss it. It's big time. This week's episode, episode 20, first episode of Team Harden series. Oh, it's a good one. Stay tuned, everyone. It's going to be fun. How's everyone doing this great Monday? I hope that y'all enjoyed your weekend because I know that I sure did. With that being said, I'm your host, Zach Shoe, Shoemaker, and I'm still in Miami, Florida for the Bong on the Beach Tournament. I hope that everyone enjoyed the Powerhouse Series, but this week we're going to be kicking off a series with James Harden AAU team, Team Harden, and you're not going to miss it because one of the top guys, Xavier Giselle, joins the show and is truly going to be something special. As for agency approaches, though, I want to get right into that, but before that, I need to talk about the Anthony Davis traits. With that being said, let's get into it. All right, so originally I was going to plan on talking about free agency, and we voted that just earlier on the episode. Because this past weekend, a trade for the decade, maybe the greatest trade ever in NBA history and sports history, involving one of the greatest players ever, was dealt this past weekend. We know that. Anthony Davis. Am I saying he's like one of the greatest players ever? Not necessarily that. I'm saying he's one of the best in the game as a potential to be the all-time greatest player, just because of the way his body is a freaking nature. We all know it's Anthony Davis. That being said, I need to talk about this. Obviously, he's going to LA Lakers. The trade that was traded was for the package for Anthony Davis going to L.A. Lakers had to give up Lonzo Ball, Brandon Ingram, Josh Hart, the fourth pick in this year's draft, and two future first-round picks, including a protected 21 pick and an unprotected 24. Along with that, L.A. could trade the fourth pick. I'm going to get into that in a little bit. Let's break this down. New Orleans currently, you're looking at a lineup that could potentially have Lonzo and Drew Holiday at the 1-2, maybe one of the greatest front court back front court defensive furnaces ever we've, we've seen in a very long time at least it's gonna be something special then you're gonna have ingram you're gonna have zion williamson i mean it's gonna be a lot of stuff you're gonna have and potentially have julius Randle. i don't know why everyone's saying that yet because we'll have to see what goes down there but points you got a really good team and of course it's fourth of the world pick we'll see what happens josh hart you'll be able to develop him maybe it's even gonna be lonzo and josh hart we'll see that being said though I really do like this. David Griffin got the best deal, I believe. I said between Brooklyn and L.A., L.A. has the highest chance, and that's truly what happened. Because when you look at this, L.A. has got a very good team. they got a very good team now. They, they, need, to, they need to get a start. We need that. And they got theirs. Now we're going to see who comes in during free, and I'll talk about that in a little bit, though. That being said, L.A. will now either have $27.8 million or $32.5 million, depending on if and or when. The timing and all, depending on when Anthony Davis waves or if he doesn't wave, his $4 million trade bonus. We'll see what goes down there. I mean, I think this is a very good trade for both teams. LeBron and Anthony Davis will be something special and scary. And because of the clay injury, there's a chance. There's just a small chance now. Not only a small chance, but there's a chance for everyone in the entire NBA. To, the window opens up. LeBron's window opens up. Embiid's opens up. Giannis's opens up. Kawhi once again opens up, depending on where he, where he goes. You got everyone's window opening up. Houston's even opens up again. We will have to see what happens because we know Golden State cannot contend, or at least won't be the dominant force that they were this year without Clay and K- or KD. So what's going to happen now? We'll see. That fourth overall pick for New Orleans. I'm not sure what they'll do. I think it really depends. They could possibly trade back and get Bull Bull or Jackson Hayes and possibly get someone like Phoenix to go offer them something else, maybe pull another piece, pull in something like Josh Jackson, TJ Warren, you never know. There's many options. I mean, New Orleans is now looking at roughly $18 million in uh, opening now they got up. That will, of course, come in July 8th. They have to wait to that because the trade will not be officially done until around July 6th to July 8th ish. It really depends on when they have this trade and when they want to get it done by. But it's looking like it'll be July 6th. That being said, throughout the week, we heard New York was hesitant. They didn't want to give up a significant amount. They didn't really have that many significant pieces, in my opinion, because I'm not a big fan of what they have built right there. That being said, I think they have a good young core, but not enough to uh, attract an Anthony Davis caliber. Lakers, they didn't want to move Lonzo or Kuzma originally, but the Lakers were able to keep him. 
So once again, you're looking at LeBron, you're looking at Kuzma, and you got Anthony Davis, all for sure locked in as very good pieces. Celtics, they engaged in Dre talk, but they were not wanting to get him. They didn't really want to overwhelm that performing given overwhelming deals. Obviously, we knew they refused to give Jason Tatum, which in my opinion, that's smart. When you're looking at it, Anthony Davis was probably going to walk away. It could have. But also, you could really consider, you could those are high chance he retains just by the way you perform, the way you treat them. The way we've seen people like Kawhi and, and Paul George. I mean, we never thought they were going to stay there. This is a very good thing, but it also shows that players can choose what they want. It's a player's league, and the front office don't have too much power. And all, when it's all said and done, that's what it truly is. We'll have to see. Lakers, on the, they need another piece maybe to balance it out. They need more depth or whatever, and they'll be a contender, just like that. And the window's opened up once again. New Orleans, they have a very, very good young core. You might consider them one of the best young cores, depending on how this performs, how this works out. But I really do like what Rob Palenka, and one of his first moves he's done is officially have full control moves. And same with David Griffin, Trajan London, all of them did. Very impressive first move. And of course, there's going to be a lot more talking about free agency, big time things coming up. But that's what I got to say about the Anthony Davis trade. It's huge. One of the greatest players we've ever seen being moved into trade in its prime, or even approaching its prime. We don't know. Anthony Davis needs to stay healthy, though. This was huge, guys. This was one heck of a thing I cannot wait to see. And one more thing, though. I don't want this being called Showtime. I don't want, I don't want people to keep saying, let's bring back Showtime and whatnot. They need a new name. I'm not sure what it is, but they need a new name because this is a new era and a new day in L.A. basketball. They've come out of being able to not be able to attract top players. They got Anthony Davis, and it's big time. Even if Anthony Davis said he's not going to make an extension right now, he's going to play out the season in his contract. We'll see, but I expect him to resign, and it's going to be something special, folks. L.A., there's a new day born in L.A. That's all I can say, folks. Man, you're not going to miss what's coming up next. Because the Team Harden AAU series will be coming up next, and you're not going to miss it. This series will go over some of the top players, and kicking it off is one of their top guys, named Xavier Ducell. You're not going to miss what also AZ Compass Prep's top player has to say. It's going to be a big time show, so stay tuned, everyone. You're not going to miss it. I couldn't be more excited than to kick off the Team Harden series with one of the top players and Compass star, Xavier Ducell. How are you doing today? I'm doing good, bro. How are you doing? Not too bad. So let's get right into this then about Team Harden. So how do you like playing for Team Harden? Um, I really like it a lot. You know, the exposure is great. Teammates are great. Um, it's just an overall really good experience, you know, getting out there and competing every day with uh, my teammates. Mm, no doubt. So when you first decided to choose, pl- choose to play with them, what kind of was the main attraction or why you decided to go play with them? Um, they were an up-and-coming organization. They had already had, um, you know, 15, 16U, and 17U uh, teams in Houston. But it was the first time they was doing it in Arizona, so I wanted to, you know, kind of start something new and, uh, you know, bring something new to Arizona that can kind of, you know, elevate the basketball here and, um, you know, bring a little bit more attention to the state. No doubt. So, Coach Polk, how has he helped you develop and how has he helped you as a person and all? Um, you know, he's been like kind of a big brother to me, you know, a uh, big mentor figure, you know, uh, he's been through, you know, the ups and downs of basketball. And so it's just really good to have him in my corner, you know, um, you know, teaching me new things or, you know, helping me improve in areas that he sees that uh, I need to improve in. So it's just an overall, you know, good guy to have in your corner. Mm, absolutely. I'm sure there's been a lot of great memories as well this last season throughout the time being with Team Harden. What's some of the biggest ones that stand out to you? Um, uh, in Dallas, we went three and one, uh, that was a really big, uh, session for us, kind of help us, um, you know, give us some momentum into the little Memorial Day Compton Magic tournament. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then in that tournament, we were, uh, able to beat a really good Dream Vision team that had a lot of D1 players on the, uh, you know, on there. And, um, I think that was really good for us, helped us boost our confidence, uh, going into Alabama. No doubt. I mean, I know that was one thing where I was able to be there and see some of that. I mean, that's a big-time win, especially when it's like, like you said, there's some big-time, some of the top players in the country, and you guys are able to go in there and, in a way, kind of are the underdogs, and you guys come out with a big-time win. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we went into the game, you know, kind of knowing we had nothing to lose, and, you know, we just competed and played hard, and you know, we ended up getting the dub, so it was good. That's awesome. Let's talk a bit about some of your teammates. What's some of the impact, and talk about some of the guys and how they play and how you like playing alongside them. You know, my teammates, I think uh, I owe a lot of credit to them. You know, uh, you know, we have Trent, I think, is arguably the best 
you know, defender, you know, on-ball defender in the country. I mean, I haven't seen anybody like him who's that fast and can just lock people up, like, in an instant. And then you got, uh, you know, Isaiah Floyd, who's just, you know, a player, attack it, makes the right play, can shoot the ball. Um, and then you got, you know, Jalen Anderson, who, you know, is just all around really good, can make plays, can create for himself. Uh, is a, a big leader role on the team. And, you know, um, whenever guys have questions and stuff, he's always a guy that you can go to to get a good answer. But, um, yeah, I mean, all of our teammates, I mean, my guy, Zhang, who just uh, committed to NAU, he's now, you know, one of the biggest hustle players I've ever seen. Mm-hmm. You know, just like his, his hustle and dynamic that he brings to the team is just, you know, nothing like I've ever played with before. So, I mean, all around, my teammates are really good. And, um, you know, I'm I'm – proud and happy to go out there and you know fight with them every single time we play no doubt so obviously playing for team Harden, you've got to be able to talk to james Harden and be able to work out alongside him a few times what's the impact he's had on your life and your growth as a basketball player um huge impact you know he's been a big mentor role to me and you know just kind of helping me through my basketball journey through the ups and downs you know showing me things that i can you know add to my game to help elevate me to the next level no doubt let's talk about compass then how do you like playing with Arizona Compass? Um, I really like playing with them. You know, the coaching staff, uh, the players, I really like everything about it. Um, but, you know, I, I can't really imagine playing anywhere else for, you know, high school basketball. I mean, it's a great schedule that they have over there. The front office is really good. So it's just overall, you know, great people to be around and I'm happy to be a part of it. No doubt. So when you're choosing between Compass, was there any other schools that are kind of in the running or was it just you knew Compass was the place you wanted to go? To be honest, I didn't really know where I was going to land at. I was kind of looking, you know, between, you know, the other prep schools in Arizona. You know, you got the Hillcrest and the Bella Vistas. Mm -hmm. But then, um, you know, once I kind of took everything into consideration that Compass has to offer, I mean, I just felt it was the best fit for me. And uh, it turned out to work out very well. So I'm happy with my decision. No doubt. So talking about some of the team, I mean, Compass definitely made some big additions in the past couple of weeks, getting guys like Frankie Collins and getting guys like um, Tez and all. But what's, what do you think those guys are going to bring to the team? And then how about their past guys, like Soda Rock and some of them? Um, I think they're going to bring a huge dynamic to the team as far as their playmaking ability and just like people know that they can uh, be threats on the court. So I think that will also help open up my game up because, you know, if you – help off me then they're going to be open if you help off them then I'm going to be open so I think it's just is it'll create a really good uh, offensive flow for us and as well on the defensive end we'll be able to get after it because I know Frankie's a lockdown defender I know Tez you know he locks up too so I think it'll be a really good season for us and I'm excited for it no doubt I mean I think you guys definitely made big time strides I mean to keep coming keep growing like you guys have I mean you guys are starting to get a lot of attention becoming one of the top schools in the state if not some of the one of the top prep schools in the country yeah, I think uh, I think this will be a really for us. I mean, we did really, we did really good last year, kind of a one of our growth years. But I think this is going to be the year where we kind of you know prove people wrong and show that we can compete with some of the no best. Doubt. So, out of all the high school players out there, is there someone that you'd really want to go team up with? That you've talked about possibly teaming up with at some level? Um, no, I mean, I, I just kind of do my own thing, and you know, the chips fall where they may. If people want to come play with me, then you know, that's it. It is what it is. But I'm just happy with whoever you know comes and throws on the Compass jersey, and uh, you know, I'll go to war with them and um, have a good time. So I'm just looking forward to no the doubt. season. So I'm talking about the NBA then. So is there one NBA player you'd really want Dream to play play alongside in the NBA someday? Um, you know, there's always, you know, the LeBrons and, you know, the Kevin Durant's and the Steph Curry's, but, you know, I guess obviously I'd have to say my guy, James mm-hmm. Harden. I mean, I don't, I haven't seen anything like him ever. So like, I think that'd be really unique and uh, really good for me because, you know, I'm, I'm a very good shooter and, you know, a lot of people, when they start focusing on him, I feel like that free me up a lot and, you know, allow me to do what I do best. Mm-hmm. So I think, you know, just any any really good playmaker, really. And, you know, James is really good at that, so probably Absolutely. Him. So you've always played against a lot of great players. Who's Who would be one of the top players you've played with that you've enjoyed playing with? Um, You know, growing up, I played on the Oakland Soldiers. You know, I think we arguably had one of the greatest AAU teams ever assembled as far as, like, where people have fallen onto the ESPN rankings nowadays. You know, we had – it was me, Josh Christopher, you know, Jalen Green, Kyrie Walker – um, you know, I mean, other names that I can't think of right now, but they were just big names. And as far as, uh, you know, high school basketball, mm-hmm. 
And, uh, I mean, playing alongside those guys definitely made my job easier, you know, as far as, you know, their playmaking abilities. But, um, yeah, I mean, I've played against a lot of really good players, as in, like, uh, Isaiah Todd battled against him uh, two years ago, okay. I think. But, yeah, man, just I, I've come across a lot of really good players. And, um, you know, I, I definitely like playing against the top competition to show that I can, you know, hang with the best. So No doubt. So talking about some of your favorite highlight plays, I mean, I'm sure you've had a bunch of highlight plays, but what would you say is one that you, really stands out to you that you'll never forget and you truly love? Um, you know, uh, I guess there's always the, the game winners and stuff like that, but um, I just like creating for my teammates. So I think there was one game where uh, we were down by a point or two, and I had, you know, broke my defender down, made a really good play, and then, you know, the help came. And I was able to, you know, make the right play to my teammate. He knocked down the shot for the game winner. And I think that's, uh, you know, one of the brightest moments in my career because, you know, I like I like making my teammates better and, you know, uh, you know, letting them get, you know, the shining moment and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, I mean, just creating for my teammates and, um, I don't know, just, you know, making making my teammates Absolutely, better. Man, that's big time. I mean, a lot of people talk about the posterizers, like you said, the game winners and all that stuff. But when it truly comes down to it, winning the game is the most important thing. And so when you're able to help a teammate get the glory and you still have the assist, I mean, that's big time. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So in terms of the summer, what is some, one kind of scale, one part of your game that you really tried working on to improve on? Um, definitely trying to work on my body, just, you know, get bigger as a, as an individual and then uh, kind of work on my, you know, tacking the basket and, you know, uh, pick and roll and just uh, overall ball handling ability, you know, just trying to, you know, elevate my game to another level mm -hmm. no doubt so then let's talk a little bit about your offers now so out of the some of the offers you have right now what are some of the biggest ones that you like or that stand out to you the most um so i got five offers right now from nau university of montana uh idaho state university of new mexico and uh utep okay and um you know out of those uh, i've taken a visit to university of montana and i, I really enjoyed it there uh, and then, you know, after the summer ends, I'll, you know, see what more offers I pick up or, you know, if I just stay with the ones that I got, then um, I'll just kind of, you know, evaluate what I have, take a couple visits, and then, you know, we'll see what happens. No doubt. So as we've talked before and all, you have a lot of different schools contacting you and reaching out to you. What are some of those schools and what would be your interest in those schools if they did offer you? Um, I've had, you know, uh, UCLA, USC, Stanford, um, Northwestern, um, Clemson, Michigan, uh, I mean, ASU, there's a lot of schools out there that have, you know, contacted me, but, um, you know, I'm just, I, I guess I'm just more focused on the ones that have, you know, offered me because there's the, the you know, those are ones that really count at the moment. Mm -hmm. So I guess, you know, if they do offer me, then they do. And if they don't, then, you know, they missed out. So, you know, I'm just looking forward to the journey. No doubt. So in terms of like growing up and all, was there ever a college that you really were like dreaming of playing or there's a college you root for growing up? Um, I didn't really watch too much college basketball growing up, to be honest mm -hmm. with you. But uh, I guess a dream school of mine would probably be, you know, UCLA or USC, just, you know, a California school. I definitely like California as a state, mm -hmm. you know, weather wise. And, you know, you know, they have a great uh, basketball fan base there. So oh, yeah. probably, you know, one of those mm -hmm. two. And that's another thing. Like, I mean, I've talked to different players before. I mean, you think about this, so many underrated players in the state. That I mean, yes, we have our superstars that are up at the top. But there's some underrated guys like Brian Clark and Marcus Howard that go underrated and they go to not necessarily big schools, but they make the mark and they become top picks in the NBA draft. And that's something I think you and a whole lot of other guys could definitely become. Yeah, I think uh, Arizona is definitely, uh, you know, under the radar still as far as, you know, good basketball players. But, um, you know, uh, everybody's journey is different. Mm -hmm. And so, you know. You know, whether I, uh, you know, make it to the NBA or play professionally overseas, um, I guess it'll just be like a different journey than anybody else. And uh, I'll be able to say that, you know, it, the road was a little bit, you know, chippier with some bumps and roads in it. You know, it wasn't as smooth. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, you get the job done and, you know, you know, make money, you know, doing what you love. So no that's awesome. So talking about your game and all, who is there someone player that you kind of model your game around or who you really want to become like? Um, no, I, I guess I'm more trying to just become the first Xavier Ducell, to be honest mm -hmm. with you. I don't really try to model my game like anybody else. I just go out there, do what I do best, and it gets the job done. So That's awesome, and that's another big thing that a lot of people don't actually always think. I mean, there's nothing necessarily wrong with modeling a game after someone, 
But when you have your own creativity, you kind of pull different things that you watch from different players there and there. It truly can create a different kind of monster, a different kind of player. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So playing alongside Jaden Lee, what were some of the best moments playing alongside him? Um, Jaden Lee's a great guy, a really good basketball player. He's really energetic. You know, you definitely get the highlight plays from him, you know, the lobs, the dunks, mm -hmm. all that good stuff. But, um, you know, just a really good guy. He was definitely another kind of big brother figure to me, kind of helping me through, you know, struggles that I had and, you know, through the ups and the downs. But, yeah, just a really good guy to play with. So out of all your role models, has it been necessarily one person you look to that's kind of guided you with decisions and been the person you would look up to if your parents or coach or someone like that? Um, you know, definitely my mom has been a huge role in my life, just, you know, throughout my entire life, you know, basketball related, non-basketball related, but, you know, definitely mm -hmm. Christian Polk is, uh, you know, a huge role model and, um, you know, mentor to me, you know, helping me through my journey. So just a lot of people in my corner, good people, and, um, you know, they help me make the right decisions and it's gotten me to where I'm at. So can't complain. No doubt. That's awesome. Let's talk a little bit more about the NBA then. Is there an NBA team that you root for as your favorite team? Um, to be honest, yeah, I always root for the Rockets because, you know, James Harden's my mm -hmm. guy, but I guess I don't really root for anybody. I just want, you know, good competitive games. And then, uh, you know, I always look forward to the playoffs because that's where, you know, the real stars mm -hmm. come out and you start to see the really good games and stuff like that. But I mean, not really. I just, I, I like watching basketball. I'm, the stu I'm a student of the game. So, you know, just basketball in general. Absolutely. So, I mean, you can obviously talk about it. So James Harden's probably your favorite player. Um, yeah, I mean, I like watching a lot of people. I, I don't necessarily think I have a favorite player, mm -hmm. you know, but I just like watching basketball, period. And, you know, he just so happens to be a good friend of mine. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I mean, that's always something to us. Like, as I've now got connections with different players and all, it's different. It's like a different feeling. Like, you love watching them there, but, like, you're, they're your friend at the same time. So it's kind of like different kind of balance to have. Yeah, it's a different dynamic mm -hmm. for sure. Let's talk about the big free agency. Obviously, the biggest player went down, Kevin Durant, yesterday. But what's your thoughts on will he stay in Golden State? Do you think he's going to sign somewhere and just rehab for a year? Um, I think he's definitely going to stay in Golden State. I mean, he's been you know through too much with them to change it to anywhere else. I think it would be kind of going mm -hmm. backwards for him. So, I mean, I don't see any reason why yeah. he wouldn't stay. I mean, especially at this point. I mean, I think prior to the injury, if they would have won or whatever, it came back. He could have walked away with the three-peat or whatever. But now the fact is, like, he's going to miss a year no matter what. i kind of be shocked if he didn't just opt in or something like that for a year. So in terms of Kawhi Leonard, do you think he's going to stay in Toronto or do you think he's going to be on the move? He's 100% mm -hmm. staying. I mean, they got to the finals his first time mm -hmm. being there, which is pretty special. And um, I think, you know, th th he can only really go up from here and just build off mm -hmm. of this. So. I mean, I'd be shocked if he leaves. Not I mean, I'm not actually going to say it would be stupid to leave, but it'd be something where it's kind of like I don't see the point in it because most likely – the best you're going to get to would be the finals once again. And is what's the chance when at risking this when you know you're a championship team right now in Toronto with a lot of young pieces. Exactly. So then you obviously got the other big free agency piece, and that's Kyrie Irving. Where do you think he's going to end up signing? Um, I mean, that's really tough, too. I think, you know, he, he might be able to go to the, the Knicks. I think he might mm -hmm. go to L.A. I think he might stay in, you know, Boston. But, I mean, it's really hard to tell. I mean – the season this year was kind of, you know, rough and, you know, had some ups and downs with Boston. But I think if they're able to, you know, come to a common ground, I think that uh, he might just stay where he's at. So, I mean, mm -hmm. I guess we'll see. I think that's the same thing. I mean, with Kyrie Irving, you don't really know. I mean, he changes his mind, honestly, almost every week in terms of what the reports come out. I mean, we don't necessarily know exactly what he's thinking always, but you just never really know mm -hmm. with him. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it's really been great having you on here today, and I can't wait to see what Path God's got for you, bro. Yeah, man, thanks. Really appreciate you uh, having me on here, and I hope to, you know, hop back on here sometime in the near future. No doubt, bro. God bless. Free agency is right around the corner, and you're not going to miss what I have to say about it, because there's been so many rumors and stuff that's going down, and, well, just wait to see what I have to say, so stay tuned. Coming up next, my takes and my opinion on where players should go and where it sounds like these guys will be playing next season. Stay tuned, everyone. So obviously we started off and we talked about Anthony Davis that's out of the way. Let's get into all these other teams and all the other big time players that's on its way as he was the biggest trade piece off the table. But there's a lot more we got to get into. As for the New York Knicks, we're going to start with that and Kawhi Leonard. They, they plan to aggressively pursue Kawhi. I don't believe it's going to go down too well. 
I don't think that Kawhi will be going there. It just doesn't fit. I believe if he's leaving Toronto, which I don't think he will, it'll be for the Clippers or maybe the Lakers, but I still think it'll only be Clippers. That's the only option there. As for New York, also, they've exercised two years. $3.5 million option for next season after he played incredible after being an undrafted free agent. Also expected to waive veteran Lance Thomas. He's been there for about six or seven years. Very good player for them, but they need to clear a cap because I believe they're trying to plan to sign two more free agents out of superstars after losing out in the Anthony Davis sweepstakes. That being said, let's talk about Kyrie Irving. He declined his player option with Boston for $21.3 million. He also fired, the big story now is that he fired Jeff Welsher and went with Rock Nation, a.k.a. Jay-Z's agency, big time thing. And when he hinted about it, it was mostly going to go down when he announced that. Rich Paul would mean he's going to L.A. Rock Nation slash Jay-Z means he's probably going to Brooklyn. That's all I can say. You're not going to sign with Jay-Z to go to L.A. Or you're not going to sign with Rich Paul to go to Brooklyn or something like that. I believe it's almost set in stone he's going to Brooklyn. You might have heard the rumors. He wants to play with Anthony Davis and all this stuff. We, I don't know. I don't think he's going to go there to also play with LeBron. I believe, I believe that LeBron and Chris or Kyrie Irving is in that situation where they're close friends. They're super close friends. I know they are. They're very good friends. They're cool. They're always going to hang out and whatnot. But necessarily playing, I don't think that's necessarily a strong suit right now. Once again, I mean, there's nothing. Could they be, pull it off and become champ, champions again? Yes. I'm just saying in terms of what their balance is, I think LeBron likes being something new interesting. He's got Anthony Davis. He wants to explore with that. Maybe have some other pieces. Kyrie wants to kind of lead being one of the top players on the team as well. Not necessarily. If he goes there, he'll be the third guy. So we'll see. Also, Anthony Davis could potentially then go to Brooklyn next summer because he didn't sign an extension. There's a plan to sign an extension with L.A., but we will have to see what goes down there. There's a lot of things going on there. We'll see. Timber Walker. He said he might, he'd be okay taking lessons of Supermax to stay with Charlotte. To have a team built around him. That surprises me. I love Cumber. He's obviously a team player. Obviously loves being with Charlotte. But to take less than the Max to go there? I'm not sure I'm all down for that. Very interesting decision there. We will see what happens. If he does in fact plan to leave Charlotte. Or at least test options. The Lakers, the Knicks, and the Mavericks are all planning to be open to him. And would be interested in adding him. If he doesn't obviously resign on Charlotte. Out of those teams. Lakers I think would be perfect. Because I think Kyrie. I think Damian. I think a lot of these guys. I think Kemba could be just as good as them if he had a bigger market. Now, yes, Portland's not a big market. And I don't know if he'd actually be as good as him, but especially someone like Kyrie. I don't think why couldn't be. He's so skilled, and people just don't even get to realize it because he's playing in Charlotte. So that'd be huge. Knicks, I could see it. Going there, but he already said he basically does not want to go there. And Dallas would be interesting with the fact of already having Luka Doncic, as in Chris Stubbs there. Who knows what's going to go. I wouldn't say that. But I think Lakers are a very high chance. Tobias Harris, he's interested in Brooklyn. They're both mutually, and Brooklyn's also engaged and interested in adding him. He grew up in New Jersey, for those that don't know. I think if, if Brooklyn strikes, if they get Kyrie, I think that's a done deal. If they maybe don't retain D'Lo, and maybe they get, and they get KD or something, we'll see what happens, but maybe then they add him. Or maybe he's like the second or third option, going Jimmy Butler and him. I don't know. We'll see what happens. I think he'd be a great addition to Brooklyn, though. But we'll have to see exactly where Sean Marks playing this, because at this point, all I'm going to say is I trust Sean Marks. I think every Brooklyn fan, I think every NBA fan knows that. He's one of the best general managers in the entire NBA. There's not much to question about that whatsoever. Clint Capella. So there's have engaged in pretty serious deals in, in regards to Clint Capella possibly becoming an outhorn for replacement. Brooklyn's also reached out to deals about Clint Capella. A couple other teams have. Those are the primary two, though. Miami, of course, has as I touched, touched up last week, but I haven't heard too much more um, engagement and more following up in that case. But as for that, Celtics. Adding someone like Clint Capella would be huge. Al Horford, there might be a replacement. Al Horford's another person you might see join a veteran and start go ring chasing. Might join someone like Brooklyn. Might join a Golden State. Might join someone like that on a cheaper deal to be able to show he can win, still be a starter, but also cont- contribute and possibly be on a contending team. Yes, Boston has the potential to, but I don't know what they're going to do. Jason Tatum, obviously they're engaged in the core and the young grouping, which is completely fine with me. I like that. Stay true to who your team is and build from the bottom up. And there could be coming, wait, wait till they're in the prime, wait a couple more years, and they could be something very, very scary. Jonas Valanciunas. He had a kind of $17.6 million option. His primary intention, though, is to just negotiate with Memphis and get a long-term deal done, which I like that. I was, I was kind of shocked when I originally saw that. But I think he should restay, restay there and just be a member of Memphis. He fits them perfectly, which is amazing with them. Build around John Morant and Jaron Jackson. That would be something special. Drogic. He picked up a $19.2 million option to remain with Miami Heat. He might get traded. Watch for that. But he is a very good player that I like seeing this happen. 
As for Jimmy Butler, Lakers have genuine interest in acquiring him. He told Confluence he'd also be very welcome and happy going to Miami. Also look for the two New York teams, Brooklyn and the Knicks. Jimmy Butler. The Lakers? I might, not, I, might, I might not mind that too much. You get something like Ray John Rondo, Jimmy Butler, LeBron, Kuzma, Anthony Davis. That would be scary. Of course, add some pieces to your bench and all. But that that might be just a team you're not going to want to mess with. That team is a championship contending team that you, I just don't know how you do anything else about that. That is a very special team. Also, I think they could look into possibly trading for Mike Conley and go over the limit even more. We'll see what goes down there, though. As for Miami, perfect. I would love that. Miami is more fun, needs more talent, especially after D-Wade's gone. Perfect replacement. I'm not saying he is D-Wade, but he's a superstar. Or he's a star player that could easily fill in them, bring it more attention, more fun to Miami. It all depends on if they can clear the cap space, though. As for Clay Thompson, even though the injury, so I'm going to get into during shoe zone, they still expected to re-sign both. My, well, Michael Thompson said he's, there's no question he's staying with Warriors as much as he wants to possibly even go to L.A. But Warriors do plan to offer Katie and Clay a five-year max deal to stay with the Warriors. That's interesting to me. That's basically saying, yeah, we know the talent. We think they're going to recover well. And we want them both staying here for the long run to possibly continue the dynasty after the season. We'll see what goes down exactly. But it will be very, very interesting to see what goes down. As for Kawhi Leonard... He's also expected to be pursued by the Lakers once, like, like I said. I don't see that happening, though, but we'll see what goes down there. Favors, Lakers also showing interest in him. They believe his style would fit with LeBron. I like it. He would be good. It depends on the contract they want. They can get him cheap. Of course you'd add him. He'd be a great addition to come off the bench, maybe even start some games to fill in for when LeBron needs some rest, when AD's out, whatever it may be. Perfect addition there. Like I said, though, there are so many moves that can be going down across the league. With free agency, it's big time. I cannot wait. It's one of my favorite times of the year. But stay tuned. I'm going to update you guys. I'm going to have a preview coming up soon. All about free agency. All about the teams. But it's going to be big time, folks. And you're not going to miss it. But for this week, this is what I got to say. All about the free agency stuff. Here's some of my takes. Coming up next with the NBA draft and what's going on. As the draft is almost here. You're not going to miss it. Stay tuned to see what I have to say about the few rumors we've heard this week. In regards to the NBA draft, coming up next, don't go anywhere, folks. All right, so a couple things we've heard this week. The first thing is that the Suns are reportedly iron DeAndre Hunter, Jared Culver, and Cameron Reddish at the sixth pick. They must be trading up, of course, to try getting Darius Garland, but we'll see what happens there. All in regards to, of course, the big trade with Anthony Davis and what goes on with the number fourth pick that the Norm Pelicans now possess. We said before, Zion is number one, Jaws number two. If the Knicks continue to keep the number three overall pick, they will draft R.J. Barrett. From there, we don't know. I really don't know how to make the rest of the mock drafts out in regards to who gets that fourth pick. I believe now if New Orleans keeps the pick, they might go into the guard, a pair of lawns in the backcourt, and move Holiday then. Maybe try getting another lottery pick. They could possibly go early, drop Bobo or Jackson Hayes. But I think they're going to try trading down. We'll see what goes down there. Obviously, there's not, there's not much more rising and falling. But it will be very interesting to see what goes down with this draft. Coming up in this just a couple days now, you're not going to miss it, though. NBA draft is going to be a big time. Lots of trades as it always goes down. And lots of movement, lots of stuff. And this is the future of the NBA. Of course, we know their top picks, but who's going to fall after that? Big time mystery. You're not going to miss it. I'm going to give you guys all the updates as I have an upcoming pre-draft preview, after-draft recap, and so much more. Stay tuned, everyone. Coming up next, you guys all love it. Shoe Zone. You're not going to miss this ahead of the four topics that the media did not cover enough, but I wanted to get into and state my opinion and my facts. So, what do I have to say? Well, one way to find out. Don't go anywhere. Sit down, buckle down, and, well, just wait. Alright, so I'm going to kick off Shoe Zone with a big time stat I just learned about. Since 2010, there have been 42 trades while LeBron James is on the roster. 11 of them were with Miami. 27 with Cleveland, and 4 have been with the Lakers so far after the Anthony Davis trade. That's an insane stat. That's just that a lot of players are moving. But for a lot of you guys might not realize, 42 trades might not be a lot to you. Well, since 2010, there have been 464 trades that have now gone down after the Anthony Davis trade. During that time period, that, that, that fair form makes up. 11% of the trades have involved LeBron James teams. That's insane. Does that say anything about LeBron James' character? No. Anything about LeBron James and his power? Yes. But at the same time, I just said LeBron wants to win. He needs the best around him. And does anyone blame him? He wants the best to win games. He wants to win rings. He wants to work up his way. 
That's all it is. It's a hardworking and it's a hard character. He wants people that work just as hard as him and can get to the promised land. And I'm all for it. I love it. I'm in full support of LeBron James and what he's trying to do here. Secondly, Ms. Ayujiri is now under investigation on suspicion of Mr. Memer, misdemeanor battery on a police officer after Thursday's big time championship win. If you guys saw that video, it's not looking too good. I don't think anything's going to go down, though, because he is Masai Ujiri. He is with the Toronto Raptors. We'll see how the NBA handles it. But not expect too much. It's not going to impact what money he makes this offseason between Washington or if it's Toronto and what happens. All I do know is that Toronto will up his contract and will give him a big-time extension. Thirdly, this is the first time in 13 years that a Nike athlete has not won the finals MVP. The last person not to was Tim Duncan. That's incredible. Just want to throw that out there, though. Kawhi Leonard has been that special, and he does not need the big-name shoe brand. In fact, if you remember, he turned that down to a brand that not many people ever thought of, in New Balance. Obviously, though, he's one of the top players and one of the best players in this playoffs and won finals MVP. Big props to him once again, as he truly showed how great he is and how he's the best two-way player we've seen, maybe since MJ. He's the closest we can compare. I've always said LeBron James, yes, he definitely is a top three player, probably is even the GOAT, maybe. But it's so hard, I don't like comparing the GOAT because it's not a GOAT. I think the GOAT of each decade and whatever and whatnot. LeBron's obviously this decade's GOAT, without a doubt, no questions asked. Followed by Kobe in the early 2000s. MJ, I mean, it goes down. We know that list. Magic, Kareem, you got, I mean, you got the down the list. Will and Bill Russell, doesn't matter, but that's that. But Kawhi is so comparable to MJ in terms of that freak out. He's got such athleticism. He's got such a two-way, such a defensive knack for the ball. He's got everything. And that's why he's truly special. LeBron doesn't really have Michael Jordan in him in that terms. It's more of just, he's the dominant player. Something that we've never seen before. Nothing like anyone's ever been. If anything, it's more like magic when you're talking about those kind of players. Finally, Clay Thompson suffers a torn ACL. I don't know what's going on in Golden State, but someone's got to go. Someone in that training staff's got to go. To have this many injuries. I mean, this, this team's been plagued in the playoffs, but especially the finals. Almost everyone besides Steph Curry and Draymond were missing games. In the final game, Draymond had to keep his mouth shut. He, he could even easily tell he's doing that. Just so he couldn't avoid possibly being suspended for the next game. I mean, sheesh, I don't know what to say about it, folks. But it's not looking good. Obviously, now KD and Clay will be missing the entire next season. If or if not, they stay with Warriors. It's, up to be, it's to be determined. But it's crazy. I feel horrible for Clay Thompson. I knew it right when it happened. But of course, my prayers and well wishes are for Clay Thompson. I hope he recovers fast. I think he, he'll be back. He'll be better than ever. And his shot will be still wet as heck. But with that being said, we have to wait a year and he does as well. Hopefully, he can possibly be back by the playoffs next year, but we'll see. But best of wishes to Clay Thompson his recovery time. That's it for Shoe Zone. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Always remember, Shoe Zone, I'll recap some of the little topics the media not giving enough attention to and get my take on those and make it bigger. Thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in on this great Monday. I hope you guys all enjoyed this episode as much as I did. If you guys want to stay up to date about Shoe's views, about my future show coming up soon, as you guys might have seen my Instagram story, well, there's only one way, and that's the Small Man Instagram on Twitter. At Zach Shoemaker, Shoes, whatever you want to do, it's going to be right there. You know my account. Also, go and subscribe to my YouTube channel, Shoes Views Zach Shoemaker, or go and like my, my Facebook page, at Shoes Views Zach Shoemaker. You're not going to miss it. Now, in terms of this podcast, please go subscribe. Leave a five star comment, favorite, applaud, like, whatever it may be. Depending on the platform you may be listening to, you don't know how much it impacts Shoes Views and the growth of it. I need to hear your feedback. And most importantly, just keep growing it. Please leave a five star. Please leave a good comment. Do everything. Make Shoes Views continue to grow and be a part of it. I truly do appreciate it. As for voice messaging, I'll let it get back to that. I want to add more of that. Please go call me in. Go call anything, record it, send it in to me. I'd love to add it in to the next episode. I want to hear what you guys have to say, your takes, whatever it may be. I'll talk about it, I'll debate it. I'll think, I'll give you guys my thoughts and so much more. Go do it right now, please. Also, Team Harden series will continue. You're not going to miss it with Zay Floyd coming up next, another one of the top players. And also, if you remember Sean Robinson, one of his best teammates at AG Prize, you're not going to miss what Zay Floyd has to say next week's episode. Or next episode is big time. As for the next thing, the first episode of The Breakdown will be coming soon. My own show, I'll self-produce it. You're not going to miss it. It's going to be big time, everyone. With that being said, though, Upcoming shows include the NBA Draft Preview, NBA Draft Recap, the award show, and my predictions will be on that show as well, NBA Teams Outlook, Free Agency Preview, Free Agency Recap and Updates, Summer League, and so much more coming soon. You're not going to miss it. Finally, with that being said, everyone, shoes is out. Everyone go be the light of God, and God bless.